This short recording is going to show how to connect QuickBooks Desktop to Tax 1099 using the web connector. I'm logging Tax 1099 from the dashboard on the left in the menu. So I'm going to go to Import and QuickBooks Desktop. What you'll see the first time you come in here is the pop up that's going to talk you through some workflow questions to help determine which version of the tool you should use, whether that is your your plugin or the web connector to work uh, with X99. Uh, if you already know what you want to use, you can check the box here and just click exit and you'll be able to move out of this uh, of this prompting. I'm just going to flow through this for just a moment. I'm going to click let's go. Um, the series of questions is going to look like this. Are you using a version of QuickBooks Desktop from 2016 to 2019? If I say no, I'm going to be directed to an Excel import because we work with the supported versions of QuickBooks Desktop. I'm going to say yes. And then the next question is going to ask if you're on a company network and using a firewall or a proxy server or anything like that. Uh, if you say yes to that question, you're going to be pushed into the uh, option for doing the, the web connector. It'll just be a little bit easier for you to walk around the, uh, the limitations of the security on your machine. So I'm going to say yes to that question because I, I do want to demonstrate the web connector. I'm going to click OK. It's going to take me to the web connector page. So the first thing to do is check and make sure that I have the QuickBooks desktop running and the company that I want to import open. So if I look over at my QuickBooks desktop here, this is the company that I want to bring in to Tax 1099. So I've got QuickBooks open and I have the company open as well. I'm going to download the web connector. You'll see it appear here down at the bottom because I'm using Chrome. If you're not using Chrome or if you don't have that option turned on to show that, you can always navigate to where your downloads are being sent inside of Windows. And so for me, that's the downloads folder. So I'm gonna double click on the web connector itself. It's gonna ask me if I want to run that. Um, now I, I've done this before, so I've got some uh, information that's already been done. So I'm gonna say yes, just to replace the existing application. You may not see that, uh, that pop-up that comes up there. But you will see this one the first time that you load the web connector. It'll ask if you want to allow Tax 1099 access to your QuickBooks data. And you're going to want to say yes to this. So you're going to say OK so that the uh, tool can apply itself to um, QuickBooks desktop for Tax 1099. And like I said, I had actually done this before, so I can see Tax 1099 here already. I've already entered my password. You would need to enter your password if this is the first time you're doing this. Check the box here, and I click Update Selected, and that's going to run the process. You can see the process uh, bars down here at the bottom. The application progress is going. Uh, the total progress will go in just a moment. And what it's going to do is it's going to pull my information over from QuickBooks Desktop into Tax 1099. Since I was already logged in to Tax 1099 and I've supplied the password here as well, uh, it's going to um, it's going to just allow me to go straight in there and do that process. Now I got an email uh, that has a link in it. Uh, if for some reason you don't get the email, then you can always go here, back to the same QuickBooks Web Connector page, and you can click this link that says "Did not receive a Web Connector confirmation email," and it will take you to the same place. Either one, whether you choose the option from the email or you choose that link, is going to bring you here to the import grid. It's gonna show you um, hopefully green dots. That means all the information that you have in QuickBooks is valid uh, for what we need. In other words, the recipients have a nine digit tax fair identification number. They have uh, five or nine digit zip codes, things like that. You may find a red dot next to any one of those. If so, then you can simply click to open that up and then you can make any modifications that you might need to based on the, uh, the messages that you see here. Often it's missing some piece of information like the state or the zip code. You may have that similar red dot appear here on your company. Uh, so if so, then you can do the same thing. You can make that correction right there inside of Text 1099. Making the correction here in Text 1099 does not make any changes to your QuickBooks company file. So you will need to remember to go back and make those changes to the QuickBooks company file as well. You can do a couple of other things here. You can edit or delete. Uh, let's just say I didn't need this form or if the amount was wrong and I wanted to change the box number. Those are things that are, uh, you're able to do here in Text 1099. Again, I'm not really best in mind if you do make changes here. Once you've confirmed everything, then you can move on with your process. Before I do that, though, I just want to point out my total here. 
if I go back over to QuickBooks and I verify that information, I go to my vendors and I look at my 1099 summary report. Um, I'm going to need to change the dates here because I'm using a test copy for this uh, particular um, company that I'm in since I'm not using the live information for a test. I'm going to refresh that using 2018 dates and I'll see that I have the same three vendors in the same total dollar figure, $17,200. It's what's being reported on my summary. So just a nice quick little check cross-reference so that you know you have the right number of vendors, you have the right dollar figure that you're processing within tax 1099. I'm going to click next there, and then I selected them. They're going to move forward. I'm going to get the message that says I have three out of three records uploaded successfully, and then I'm able to go through and complete my processing. Uh, a couple things to note here. Uh, you can choose to have us do the mailing for you. You can email copies if your recipients accept that. You can set the schedule date for a future date up to the deadline date. So if these are box seven, that will be January 31st. If they are not box seven, it's April the 1st this year because March the 31st is on a Sunday. The other thing that I want to point out is that we're pulling the state address for the recipient. So if there is a state filing requirement, you'll see that here. Uh, you can certainly deselect that if you want to. Uh, you can reselect it uh, back, uh, but we can do that state filing for you. If you're planning to do state filing yourself, then that is where you would deselect that option. If you don't see a state filing box here, that means that is either participating, that person is either in a state that participates in the combined federal state filing program, and therefore there's no need to send it because we'll do that automatically, or they're in a state like Texas or Florida that doesn't have any income tax and you don't have any need to report. From here, you just check the ones that you want to file, and then you click the next button down at the bottom, and you move forward with uh, paying with your credit card and checking out a tax deadline. Back in QuickBooks, if you, for some reason, got to that point, decided you wanted to delete those forms and wanted to rerun uh, your, uh, wanted to rerun your process for doing your import, you now have web services located here inside of QuickBooks. And so you can update your web services and it'll bring you back to this page here where you could run that process again. Just update those selected forms one more time if that's what you want to do. Just make sure you've deleted the original forms that you imported for this company in text in 99 before running that process again. And that's it for going through the web connector process.